сожалению, только со временем помню, что профессиональная автобуса как бы влечет за собой и административную и духовную Do remember that tomorrow you have to make a film shooting in the Court of Appeal by the case of Vasiliev. Yes, yeah, sure. We will be on the spot at half past nine in the morning. Yulia, I watched your last program. Well done. Good job. Keep it up. Thanks. Whose phone was left in the kitchen? It's mine. Hello? Run away before it's too late. Who is it? It doesn't matter now. Just run away right now until they do something to you. Why should I run? You are in the cult. Do you know what it means to fight for your own freedom in 19 years old? When there is no war and or retreat? To fight just because someone decided to earn money by your closest people. No, I wasn't in any cult. However, I truly despise and hate those people who tried to convince everyone around that I became entered of a cult and I immediately needed to be saved just because of their greed and insignificance. I think I'll never forgive it. I used to have a dream to become a journalist since my childhood. Then, as it often happens, in the family council my parents decided that it wasn't the best variant for me. However, hope turned up again in my life when I was 19. I was studying at the best school of journalism. I remember when Julia came to the first classes. Her eyes were really burning. It was clear that she was waiting for a long time for this chance. And finally, she succeeded. A group of religious extremists attacked one of our employers. They were trying to convince the family of Yulia Yalavaya that the Fate Analysis Institute and the Redut Law Company are the cults, which even sounds itself absurd. However, there were people who blindly believe in this story and didn't require any proof. We had no choice but to protect our employer and strike back. But unlike the anti-cultists, we had to stay within the law. I would like people in France, Spain, Japan and the United States knew what could happen to them and could protect themselves and their own future. время начинать пугать родителей. Ты нашла их контакты? Да. У Юлиной мамы есть страница ВКонтакте. Правда, она всегда редко заходит, но я ее уже написала. Письмо получилось задушевное. Любая мать поверит. Хорошо. Посмотрим. The religious extremists use your fear. This is the basis of their activities. They aspire to provoke you so that you broke the law. In fact, they are the animals who don't even want to become human being. Dogs bought in the market and apes in the cages. They are trained, then turned into the torpedoes and sent to the selected victim to cause fear and panic. Александр, доброй ночи. Меня зовут Антонина Еловая. Я мама Юлии Еловой. Моя дочь попала в лапы к сектанту. Мне сложно сдерживать эмоции. Слава Богу, я познакомилась с Марией. Она посоветовала обратиться к вам. Здравствуйте, Антонина. 
Да, я уже слышал про ваш случай. Это ужасно. Что вы посоветуете делать? С чего начать? Как мне вернуть семью мою девочку? Нужно готовиться к войне. Просто так они ее не отпустят. Для войны нужны силы и средства. Вы это понимаете? Да, конечно. Я уже поговорила с мужем. Он готов платить сколько нужно. Главное вернуть Юлю домой. Хорошо. По вопросу денег договаривайтесь с Марией напрямую. А что мне сейчас делать? С чего нужно начать? Пишите заявление в полицию. Придумайте вместе с Марией формулировку пострашнее. И не пожалейте денег на правоохранительные органы. Это самый верный вариант. Не нужно никаких судов. Пусть полиция начнет ими заниматься. Мама Юлия Елова understood the extremist recommendations in her own way. What's the result? She was afraid to write the application to the police on Mr. Oleg Mainzev. Instead, she wrote in an application on her native daughter. When I was running through the long corridor at the district police office, I wanted to get away from everybody. However, more than anything, at that moment I hated my mother. In fact, she betrayed me. She just locked me at the police office for eight hours. I couldn't help myself. There was only anger and hatred. When did your problem start with your family? It started on the 2nd of September 2015, when my mother went to the police and wrote an application about me. She wrote that I was crazy and got under influence of the trained people. She also pointed in the application that I was in a cult and uh, I was being prepared to the shipping abroad where I would involved in prostitution. She also wrote that I used drugs. I don't know who helped my mother to come up with uh, all this formulation. How did the police react? When they came to our house, they said they were investigation on the subject of the cultic activities of the organization where I worked. It was nonsense. Just an excuse in order to take me to the police office and gave them the evidence. I couldn't believe that it was my mother who did all these things to me until I saw her application to the police with my own eyes. The closed person. I will never forget when she ran into my room crying and yelled, Julia, what should we do? The police came. It was a farce and stage performance from its very beginning till the end. While driving to the police office, I wrote to my lawyer a message about what had happened. I don't know what that evening would have ended with if the lawyers Panchenka and Tarasenka hadn't come for me. Then, for a long time, perhaps two or three months, I periodically wanted to hide somewhere and run off the phone, just hide and cry for a long time. I thought I started going crazy. I constantly looked around. It seemed to me that my mother was hiding somewhere nearby. Every time, passing by the police, I thought they could take me to the police office for the long conversation about nothing, just because they were paid for it.
resident at the police office. Hope turned up. My parents came to Mr. Alek Maltsev and he agreed to accept their apology. It was an initiative of my parents. I hope that after this meeting everything would be all right. I was wrong. Later I rewatched this video many times. My mother couldn't admit her guilt, despite the fact that it was she who wrote a false application to the police with her own hands. Despite it, I believed and waited my mother to realize what she had done and find the straight to apologize at least in front of me. Instead, almost every night I was sent her messages, which caused the tears welling up in my eyes. I spent hours in explaining that they simply used her. There is no cult and I worked as a journalist in the official Ukrainian media edition. There was even a moment when she began to listen to me. Антонина перестала мне верить. Тянет с деньгами. Александр, подскажите, пожалуйста, что мне делать? Работать, Маша. Они просто так не несут деньги. Их надо постоянно пугать. Иначе они соскочат. Что у тебя с журналистами? Ковалева не играющая. Отработанный материал. Ей, похоже, у вас в Одессе уже никто не верит. Ищу. Ускоряйся, Мария. В этом бизнесе нельзя долго думать. I remember one time I even thought that my mother slowly began to revolt. But then something happened. Александр, здравствуйте. Добрый вечер, Антонин. Мне кажется, не все так плохо. Мы были у Мальцева. Такой кричный офис. Он, оказывается, адвокат. Он сектант и исчадие ада. Сейчас я вас наберу. Вам, наверное, дорого из Москвы звонить. На кону вопрос спасения души молодой девушки. Знаете, это мой православный долг уберечь жизнь человека от силы зла. Скажите, вы что, не видите, что теряете свою дочь? Да, вы правы. Вы ведь столько в нее вложили. Вы ее родили. Да. Вы ее воспитывали. Да, конечно. Вы помните, как водили ее за руку в детский сад? Конечно, помню. Вы помните, как вы сидели по ночам рядом с ее кроватью в те дни, когда она болела, и у нее была высокая температура? Конечно, помню. Она ведь вам дорога. Она самая дорогая, что у меня есть. А помните, как она вам рассказывала про свою первую любовь? Да. Вы ведь были с ней, как лучшие подруги. А что сейчас? Она думает, что вы ее враг. Да. И кто это сделал? Мальцев. Что мне делать, Александр? Напишите Мария. Она знает, как вам помочь. Спасибо вам огромное. Я даже не знаю, как вас благодарить. Оставьте. Берегите свою душу и душу своих близких людей. The problem is that the methods of religious extremists don't allow you to bring them immediately to the criminal liability. The anti-cultists try at any price to do 
so that the parents of the so-called victims were ready for everything. It's important to understand that money is the main fool of the religious extremism. Сейчас Антонина к тебе прибежит. Она на все готова. Да и пусть приготовит денег. Как вы это сделали? Вы потрясающий психолог. Целый кандидат наук. На этом у меня Дворкин научил. Когда-нибудь расскажу. Деньги, как обычно, перекидывай мне на карточку. Договорились. Доброй ночи, Александр. Да, и пора мамаше сделать что-то решительное. Нужен скандал. Пусть, например, внезапно приедет на работу. Я думаю, они этого точно не ждут. Спасибо за идею. Так и сделаем. Я рада, я знала, что... Выслушайте, я Какими судьбами расскажите? Что? Какими судьбами? Я приехала, у меня мать заболела. Приглашаю вас в гости. Luckily, by accident, that night I went home together with the operator and our chief editor after the making a show. Otherwise, it could end up much worse. Поехали домой. Я все, я всех приглашаю, Юля. Ты меня не веришь? Поехали, я покажу. Что покажешь? Вот милиции нет. Все покажу. Все. Ответы с СБУ покажу вам. Какие ответы с СБУ? Ваши заявления, от которых я написала. А то есть вы в СБУ писали, да? Конечно. I was so ashamed of my mother. This is one of the most terrible feelings when you are ashamed of your parents' deeds. She was incontinent in her words. She couldn't clearly answer any question. Юля, ты, я тебе говорю, ты пожалеешь. Ты папу довела до такого состояния, понимаешь? Я тебе говорю, ты продаешь родителей за деньги? Что значит продаешь родителей за деньги? Юля, что, 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 что это значит? Что вы говорите вообще? И, и бабушку. Я тебе расскажу дома. Поехали со мной. сейчас. Я говорю, поехали со мной. Я тебе привезу сейчас эти люди обратно. I didn't understand what they had done to her. A person can change so much by himself in just a few months. Rafaela knows what she is talking about, at least because at one of time she worked inside one of the anti-cult organization, which collaborated with such structures as FACRIS. The people who uh, read this uh, uh, website and watched television became uh, uh, very scary because they think that their children can be victims of this kind of groups. Что пригласила и что вы приглашали ее? Ты остаешься с ними? Уйдите. Стоп, стоп, стоп. Что вы толкаетесь? Вы что примете ко мне силу? В чем дело? В чем дело, я говорю? Слышишь ты? Я тебе говорю, Юля, ты очень пожалеешь об этом. Rafaela knows not only the methods of anti-cultists, but also the fatal consequences of their actions. Times don't solve the problem. They don't rescue their children because they go away again and again. The consequence is uh, that the children don't speak anymore with their parents for many years or forever. Вы не бойтесь писать на него во всякие органы. Если вы видите хотя бы минимальные признаки обмана, мошенничества, того, что вас надувают в секте АСПН, вы должны об этом писать в украинскую милицию. И это сам... My mother was ashamed of her actions too. But instead 
of an apology. They were such a thing when she called me at night and just yelled. Probably the most difficult period began. Everybody around pressed me, my relatives, acquaintances and friends. At the same time, every day I was among people who were a hundred times stronger than all my surroundings. Nevertheless, the public opinion was suppressing me. Sometimes I couldn't tolerate it. It was enough for my mom to send me one message and I could just burst into tears. She knew it, but still made use of it. Julia, my girl, I wish you nothing but well. Why don't you listen to me? Come home. Your father and grandmother are waiting for you. One day I noticed another peculiarity. My mother always regarded the topic of God rather naturally. Then, at some point, she abruptly started talking about God and God's punishment. For some reason, she abruptly became religious. Alexander, why do we not have to get out of Julia from the sect? Do it, Mala. Нужно молиться. Что вы имеете в виду? Скажите, Антонина, как вы относитесь к церкви? Иногда по очень большим праздникам захожу, но очень редко. Надо бы вам пойти в церковь. Для такой борьбы нужны силы не только физические, но и духовные. Поняла. Пойду обязательно. У вас в Одессе среди священников есть очень мудрые люди. К тому же они истинно верующие и уважаемые даже в московском патриархате. Мария вам напишет, с кем из них лучше встретиться. Спасибо вам большое за заботу. Да, и пообщайтесь как мать с этим недоадвокатом Панченко. Вечно она под ногами путается. Объясните ей по-матерински, чтобы она держалась подальше от Юли. Конечно, все так и сделаю. Of course, I have legal practice for already 12 years. So, for 12 years I never saw the similar situation. Antonina Yalava was the first one when I saw it. And she can't explain her actions. So I, I can understand that that fear and that uh, social panic is still uh, fed in orthodox majority uh, countries and that there are warnings, I saw such warnings outside some churches, beware of sects, uh, don't join sects, uh, things uh, uh, like that. These people are very much intimidated by someone. Ничего не нарушая. Есть еще неписанные законы. 
не писаны, это какие? Как же я могу их снять, если они нигде не написаны? Uh, Moscow has for quite, well, certainly 20 years, more than 20 years now, become the, the Vatican of the uh, anti-sect uh, movements. Uh, in 1993, uh, Alexander Dvorkin was blessed by Patriarch Alexander II uh, at the time for creating a, a big umbrella organization, grouping together, that was to be directly linked uh, to the Orthodox Church. The Orthodox Church is uh, more worried about their members than Catholic Church. I don't know why. Uh, perhaps there are the historical and sociological reasons for this behavior of the Orthodox Church. Corporate more uh, with the institutional people, with the police, uh, with the political power in Russia or uh, Ukraine. When we talk about the role of the religious extremism in the world system, first we need to understand the forms of this phenomenon and the ways it manifests itself. And the first level which we can talk about is the level of the secret state policy. What does it mean? A citizen of any country must think in a certain way. In fact, he should accept the rules of the game. Otherwise, he will be out of the law. There he seems to be free, but there are some nuances. A person, for his part, must be a patriot who shares the values invented in the society to the government was favorable to him. However, that is not enough. A true patriot should actively support the majority religion. The government needs patriots and those people who will teach these patriots to fight the dissidents. Dvorkin, just to, to name uh, one, one of them, uh, was invited to a congress in uh, Beijing, uh, that an official state congress about sects and of course Falun Gong. And so he was part of that meeting uh, to criticize Falun Gong. He came back to Russia and he started criticizing Falun Gong and also helping uh, other actors in Ukraine that I know in, in Kiev uh, to, in, uh, with the help of the Communist Party in Kiev and uh, the Chinese Embassy to bar any activity of Falun Gong uh, uh, in Kiev. The next level after the secret state policy, where we can see the manifestations of the religious extremism, is a level of the academic science. When the Church, using its authority, begins to interfere in the academic science, the Church figures, overtly or covertly, start exerting pressure on the dissident scientists, because in their opinion, science should also support the secret state policy. The anti-cult organization also can be used for this purpose. In Italy, in 2008, uh, there was a particular case, the case of an um, association named Archeon. I was a scholar. I was studying ago, and after my meeting with them, uh, the anti cult organization attacked me in the same way as uh, they attacked a chaos, this uh, spiritual group. I expressed my opinion about this law. I was persecuted by the police, by the judge, and by the anti cult movements in Italy. When this happened to me, I understood very well what means to be persecuted for your ideas, for your opinions.
the secret state policy, academic science level, and finally, the level of the certain structures organization. These are the structures which takes the responsibility to regulate in society the freedom of conscience and freedom of religion. Who profits them? The state and the majority religion. Such organization as factories is a powerful tool on the one hand and they bring a lot of money on the other hand. Why is it so? Because they regulate the market. For example, they can eliminate the political opponents and protect the interests of the majority religion in a certain area. You may ask why it's needed to protect the interests of the majority's religion. Because the battle for the flock doesn't stop for a second. Some people, uh, members of Catholic Church, uh, cooperated with the uh, factories uh, groups in Italy. But uh, the situation inside Catholic Church is very complex. There are many uh, Catholic people and bishops and priests who don't agree with this kind of uh, behavior against religious minorities. But the cooperation in exists, really exists. Now, one has to give this structure certain methods and weapons, and will get a perfect religious extremist organization, which also can work with the private orders, being completely autonomous. In fact, it's the perfect organized criminal group, which operates on the line of law. And even when it goes over this line, nobody will notice it. After all, this structure was established with the acquiescence of the government and church. Что у тебя с журналистами? Что никому в Одессе деньги не нужны? Мои целы побаиваются. После прошлого года с Ковалевой и Михайленко. Не хотят отвечать за заказуху. Не верю. Всегда есть отбросы без принципов и с жаждой наживы. Мне посоветовали один интересный вариант. Выглядит глуповато. Но публика может поверить. Главное что-то придумать пострашнее. Информационный киллер, например. А что у него с лицом? После инсульта. Мне нравится. Если он откинется во время информационной войны, крайним выставим Мальцева. Да, представляю заголовки. Мальцев уничтожил украинского журналиста Бакаева. Сколько он хочет денег? Завтра пообщаюсь с ним и сразу отпишусь. Хорошо. At some point, my mother just stopped hearing me. They have changed her beyond recognition. At that moment, the propaganda or the good moment uh, is uh, almost finished. The parents can decide to give some money to rescue their children. The worst thing is that those who cheated on my mother have earned good money on our family. My parents spent a lot of money on all these uh, advisors and were ready to go further.
It was a horrible sight. She just repeated the words learned by heart. I wanted to look into the eyes of those people who cheated on my mother and destroyed our family. Psychologists and lawyers who need uh, clients, who need to, to get money, the Antiquot organization can, uh, can give them some clients more. It was clear that she had many different advisors who put into her ears nonsense for money. Uh, who is the journalist Dmitry Bakayev? What should I say about a person who said that he was an information killer and was going to destroy Mr. Oleg Maltsev for money? I think that it's very simple in a sense. Uh, they are just playing on panics, uh, creating artificial fears and, and panic and, and then uh, to substantiate uh, their discourse, their narrative, uh, they say, oh, but I read uh, an article uh, in, the, in the press uh, a, few, a few days ago or a few weeks ago uh, to what happened to the son and the daughter of uh, that family that was uh, a family of devout uh, Orthodox. Uh, and uh, that, that sort of narrative may not be true, true at all uh, because uh, it's uh, uh, just tabloids. Uh, media that are mainly interested in, in such stories. They just want to sell stories. Whether it's true or not true, they don't care about it. The religious extremists have two goals, the destruction and robbery. However, as they work in the most cases under the protection of the church or government, they need a spacious excuse. In society, it's considered immoral to destroy something for no reason. But if you first hung the label, for example, called some philosophical or psychology community a cult, and then started destroying this organization, then the society wouldn't mind it. And this has always been so. Remember the Crusades, the robbery of the East under the special excuse of the struggle for the Holy Sepulchre. The religious extremism is a mechanism of destruction and robbery. To free the marketplace, they need to either rob or destroy the competitors and then sell this place. It is impossible to regulate the religious market, but they try to do it. What they try to do is uh, to save people who are in minority religions in order to return these people in the institutional religions. Because minority religions are competitors and um, traditional religions sometimes lose their, their members. Those people who are involved in religious extremism have the classic working model. Of course they do trolling, at least they engage media and interact with the law enforcement officials. However, there is a certain algorithm. At first, they find the person who will serve as the extremist financier. For example, in the case of the anti-cultists, parents often play the role of the financiers. In order parents started giving money, first they have to be scared. For example, extremists may say that your child might commit a suicide while working for a particular organization.
So they go to the counselor, to the art and cult organization. The answer um, is always the same. Yes, your daughter, your son, is uh, uh, in, inside the very dangerous school. They brainwash uh, your uh, daughter and you have to rescue them. Channel now that is used quite often uh, by those anti-sect movements is internet and social uh, media to uh, do the same as uh, some Muslim extremists do to radicalize uh, people who are afraid uh, and so uh, legitimately afraid about the future of their children, even if they are uh, adults. Stories which invent extremists are of the same type. Suicide, selling children into sexual slavery, brainwashing, fraud and the sexual harassment. Of course, these stories have no proofs. But those who read and listen things like that don't need any proofs. They need only emotions. When parents are intimidated enough, the counselors, in the face of anti-cultists, receive first money. And then they give money to the lawyers, law enforcement agencies and, of course, the media. Чего Макаев тянет? Пусть выпускает программу. Уже пора. Мало материала, говорит. Так пусть делает больше. А лучше уже то, что есть, пусть выпустит в эфир. Мальцеву нужно мочить, и чем больше, тем лучше. Помнишь, как мы с третьим цифровым сработали? 15 программ за 20 дней. Есть проблемы с главным редактором Думской. В смысле? Он не верит, что Дима не брал денег за репортаж. Хочет, чтобы с ним поделились. Тогда дайте ему 100 долларов. В чем проблема? Антонина тебе на телевидении дала 3000. Он хочет 500. Это проблема Багаева. Пусть идет и договаривается. Что у вас в Одессе все через жопу? Даже заказуху в эфир не можете выпустить. Делаю все, что могу. Если ему нужен материал, пусть идет на интервью с Мальцевым. Уверен, что он не откажет. Чтобы вы не думали, что я такой, я все-таки озвучиваю то, что мне говорили своим работникам, мы запретили сексуальные отношения. Сейчас отвечу словами адвоката Панченкова, когда у нас все проблемы не из-за того, что кто-то переспал. Да, а из-за того, что кто-то с кем-то не переспал. Честно сказать, как вы себе это представляете? Это что, я должен целыми днями, ну или пояс верности, или After the interview in the office, I rewatched this video with Bakayev many times. I was looking for at least some common sense in his words. Unfortunately, I couldn't find it. How can a person who has worked on television for more than 20 years misunderstand what he is talking and writing about? Паства идет, это основная религия. У секты, у секты нет, у секты нет. И самый главный признак – это харизматический лидер, как я уже говорил. To be honest, first I was sorry for Bakayev, because this man has survived an insult accident, he is clearly unwell and behaves completely stupid. However, after he had warmed himself into my parents' confidence and they have started paying money for my salvation, at this moment my pity turned into anger. What is 
Что это, Маша? Мы говорили про журналиста, который возьмет и перегрызет горло Мальцеву. Что сделал Бакаев? Да он просто трус и же полис. Никакой не информационный киллер. Да, это было слабо. Слабо? Да ты видела, как Мальцев катал его в асфальт? Ни одного внятного вопроса. Сидел, как дебил первоклассными. Не мог двух слов связать. Вы правы. Мария, Бакаев завалил все, что можно. Он что, не мог выучить термины Дворкина, которые я тебе скинул? Если так будет продолжаться дальше, я оставлю этот геморрой тебе. И ты сама будешь с этим всем разбираться. Я понимала... I realized I was just used. However, this fact doesn't just those wild acts of my mother, who composed the increasing absurd and really began to hurt my leaders under the guidance of her advisors. At the same time, such people as Bakayev no less uh, sickening. After all, they had a choice not to take money and not to participate in this business. I knew that such people as Nivyev, Bakayev, Kavalyova go through till the end. They want to take all the money from people who trust them. Nothing can stop them. Dmitry Bakayev, why do you need money for such high price? Stroke, poverty, imbecility, greed and Immorality. Если этот баран не может справиться, начинает давить на девчонку. Рано или поздно она сломается и прибежит к мамаше. Он то не случится когнитивный диссонанс. Поняла. Сделать фейки в социальных сетях? Нет. Найди ее подруг поумнее. Пусть звонят и спасают Юлю. Хорошо. Last time you called to me a few years ago. Is anything wrong? Yes, I heard you got into a car. Tell me, please, is it nothing to do for you except picking up scrap of gossips? Fool, you don't understand how much is dangerous. Did my mom send you? No. Hand it over to the people who sent you, not screw with other life and get off my parents' back. Julia, you are a zombie. Lera, and you are a prostitute. Or do I need to refresh your memory when you made boast of the video some time ago? Stupid. Lera, goodbye. The attacks of hate towards my mother turned into the anger to those who tried to ruin my life in 19 years old. I hated those who cheated on my parents. Больше тянуть нельзя. Сам Бакаев ничего сделать не сможет. Согласна. Чтобы Антонин продолжала платить деньги, нужны новые жертвы. Что у тебя с родителями других сотрудников Мальцева? Большинство из них уже мне не верит. Но к ним пришла новенькая. Смазливая. Давай ее. Начала работать. Нашла контакты ее дяди. Отправлю завтра с французской почты первые шаблоны писем. Так будет убедительнее и страшнее. Давай, только поторопись. Знаком ее родственников с Бакаевым, и пусть он наконец-то начинает отрабатывать деньги. 
At some point, it has become clear to everyone around that Dvorkin, Niveev, Bakayev and other religious extremists had lost the war against Mr. Oleg Maltsev. They are not accustomed to the protect confrontation. They knew that soon it will be over and made last step. On the 10th of February, my parents took me from home on the pretext of going to a restaurant for having a cup of coffee. When I got into my parents' car, my mother sat down with me in the back seat. She explained this by saying that she wanted to hug me. When she started hugging me, my dad locked all the doors of the car. I realized that something went wrong. This were the steel arms. She wasn't going to set me free. Then I noticed that we were going in a completely different direction. I started shouting. Let me go, I wanted to go back home. They began to keep me stronger. Mother tried to pick up my phone, so I couldn't call anyone. I started screaming louder, and after that a punch followed. I started shouting, so they called the police. Father pretended to be calling the police. He told by the phone that he had a crazy daughter in the back seat of his car, who got into a cult and needs to be urgently saved as she was brainwashed. I was lucky that I was able to open a window at the moment we were at the petrol station. The attendants heard me. I shouted that I was held hostage by my parents and asked for help. The serving staff called the police and asked my parents not to go anywhere. To be honest, I was shocked when I heard what happened to Dasha. I thought the world seemed to go mad. That, uh, that surf on that wave of, uh, of fear and uh, anxiety and uh, manipulate that uh, fear uh, to, to gain them to their uh, narrative and then to, to use them uh, as pure objects and instruments uh, to uh, defame and to uh, tarnish the reputation of uh, religious, spiritual or other uh, groups uh, of that nature. During the interview, Mr. Fortret didn't know about the case of Dasha Avchinikova, but exactly described what happened to her parents. They turned my parents not into a cannon fodder, but the toys in the hands of a puppeteer. And this puppeteer directed their actions against me. My father met Dmitry Bakayev at the address number 10 Kanatna Street on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Two of my uncles went together with my father. So they met Dmitry Bakayev, who called himself the savior of children from the cults. The diapason of this phenomenon starts from an old woman who curses dissidents standing at the temple entrance. This is the lowest level of the diapason. The top of it is an armed organized struggle for faith. The best example is the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. However, war is a thing of fragmentary. The main religious extremists are in the middle of that diapason. They are the most dangerous. Yes, I would say in the case of a Christian, they, they don't care about uh, their narratives, wh whether they are true uh, or not. Um, they don't care about the truth. They are not uh, researchers, they are not scholars. Uh, they are people that have a specific commitment against something. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be against religion in general, it can be against some religions called uh, sects. Uh, but uh, I don't expect them at all to change their, their lines. The religious extremists use the methods which the special forces were armed with. 
These are the methods by which they made the revolutions, changed the structures, beliefs and certain convictions of a large groups of individuals. The modern society is more like a herd of animals, and the herd is not so difficult to manage if you have leaders and methods proven by many years of practices. I looked at the situation of Dasha, and I had a déjà vu feeling. After everything what happened to me, it seemed it should be clear for everybody that all of these Nivevs and Bakayevs just make money on our parents. The methods which are used by religious extremists can be divided into four categories. First category is the background. Certain people start discussing the problem and frightening the audience in the Internet. That's the way the public opinion is being formed. There are no personal accusations yet. After a while, the speakers appear. They should look maximally authoritative. The speakers purposefully attack a specific person or organization. The third category is the middle fight. It's a pinpoint fight when the media is joined in the place where the person is. They engage journalists worth of money they have received. I know the names of two people who cheated my parents and my family. It was Dmitry Bakayev and Maria Kapar. The letters came from France. The most interesting thing is that the first letter was sent to my uncle and then he sent it to my mother. What was the content of this letter? This letter dealt with the fact that they had a psychological impact on the employees of the company. According to this letter, the employees were tortured and forced to work. They were told to stop communicating with their parents, and they were convinced that their parents are nothing. The last category, number four, is the scheme organization. The background is ready. Speakers have finished their work, journalists made a fuss. It's time to save a child from cult. The extremists begin to frighten parents who, being scared, start verifying the words of extremists in the Internet and find the invented background, false experts and opinions of journalists who received a fee for their dirty work. Only a question of money for the rescue project is remained. The lawyer Panchenko has kept parents of Daria Avchinikova from financial expenses and criminal liability. Otherwise, there could be a repetition of the case of Julia. However, this time it could be much worse, because parents forcibly kidnapped Dasha. Olga Panchenko dissuaded her from writing an application on her parents. The program of Bakayev was broadcast on the 27th of February, but absolutely nothing had happened. There was no resonance. Bakayev exposed himself at the laughing stock again. Оставь и больше не лезь туда. Я пообщался с Александром Леонидовичем. Он согласен со мной. Немного пошумели и хватит. Мы все равно вышли в плюс. Понял. А что с этим жирным евреем делать-то будем? Мы его все равно кончим. Просто как-нибудь в другой раз. Сейчас есть чем заниматься. Из РПЦ пришел очередной заказ. For all this time, Sid was put out of Mr. Oleg Maltsev. Different services checked up his activities and no trespasses were found. They tried to prevent his research and law activities many times. And despite all these facts, Mr. Oleg Maltsev never, I repeat it, never, reproached me and said, you see how much problems we have because of you and your parents. I just asked him for help and he protected me. 
Of course, I want to point out that only the information and legal work is not enough. Oleg Maltsev developed a multi-level system which includes legal and manifestation activities and became the basis of the public organization called Cavalier. The purpose of this organization is to fight against religious extremism and any manifestations of the religious intolerance, intolerance to the lifestyle and way of thinking of other people. And this is all my story. It was really hard for me to leave it all. I really don't want things like that to happen to someone else. Mr. Fatra, please tell us how it is done in Europe in the United States. The, the case of the daughter of uh, Friedrich Gries uh, in uh, Austria, uh, who created an anti sect uh, movement uh, uh, because his uh, daughter, who was an adult, a young adult uh, at that time, uh, had met uh, someone during her uh, university studies. Uh, who belonged to a Pentecostal church. At that time she was in a, a very psychological uh, situation. Uh, she was consulting a, a psychologist, also psychiatrist, uh, and so on, because she had a, a deeply uh, hidden secret uh, in her life that even her parents uh, didn't know. Her personal problem is that she was for years a victim of incest by her brother. And that was the beginning of the uh, involvement of Friedrich Gries, the father, in the anti-cult movement, trying to show to the journalists, to the media in general, that her daughter uh, had been recruited uh, by a Pentecostal church at the time when she was in a psychological crisis which was not the, the real reason of her conversion to another religion. And that conversion uh, brought her to a better uh, psychological and physical life, in fact. And when I met uh, the father, Friedrich Gries, I told him, why are you going on that fight against that specific church, but then lumping together all other religious movements as dangerous cults and sects and so on and so on? Because at the same time, you destroy your own family, your own relations with your daughter, but also with your grandchildren. Because your grandchildren will get a negative image of you, or you will only see them once or twice a year, uh, etc. He was the president of uh, Fekris uh, between 2005 and 2009. Very often in such situations, parents build their careers and organize their lives. Nevertheless, for society, of course, they try to expose it as a concern for their children. They were motivated uh, sometimes by selfish uh, feelings and, uh, and sentiments uh, towards uh, their, their children. But at the same time, uh, they attracted uh, the attention uh, of the media and the uh, journalists uh, and, and so they started to feel important with their stories and narratives. They were victims, victims of sex. Their children were victims uh, of sex uh, uh, as well. They suddenly overnight became stars of the media. Uh, but we know that uh, such success is very limited uh, in time. That's exactly what happened in the case of my mother who worked as a teacher of math for over 20 years. And here she felt like a star. She appeared on air, posing on camera for money, instead of having hurt me and wonder why I made the choice, exactly why I decided to study journalism, and finally, why I think and I still have been thinking that Mr. Oleg Maltsev is a genius scientist. We recently recorded an interview with prominent Ukrainian religious studies expert Lyudmila Filipovich. I asked her only one question. What would you do if your child went not into a criminal or dangerous organization, but in an organization which is simply incomprehensible for you? 
would go together with him to understand what attracted him in this organization, and what of his demands I didn't comply as a physical and spiritual mother, so that he is looking for the values outside of my family, out of those values that we claim. I would try to understand the reason of his leaving. I would help my child to return, rather than doing all those things like the most of their parents did. I think such a simple feeling as love is a very powerful weapon. If you love your child and your wife, then believe me, nobody leaves those who love. As a result of the application of the Cavalier technology to the extremists, Maria from France terminated her activities. Alexander Neveev stopped his action to discredit the scientist Oleg Maltsev. Eight criminal cases were initiated against Antonina Yelovaya. As for Julia, she still can't find a common language with her mother. Each time, any attempt ends with the conflict. After all the events described above, Julia decided to change the country. She decided to go to China to start there a new life. After the religious extremists carried out their operations in certain areas, the so-called residual phase occurs. There are always unhappy persons. As the time goes by, parents begin to realize that they were just used, and the extremists simply extorted money from them. The special radical journalists, psychologists and human rights defenders find themselves in the dock. They have to answer by themselves to the law for their actions. At the same time, all these people have learned certain working methods of the extremists during the information war. The chain reaction begins. All of these methods are applied in everyday life. A hostile environment occurs in the city and takes a protracted nature. Soon, the smoldering fire of religious extremism is spreading all over the world. In this way, an infinite engine for earning money on fear and intimidation of other people arises. And since the religious extremists are omnivorous and immoral, then you or your close relatives may be there 